Now, did you know the Xbox Series S or X, either, the S is obviously a lot cheaper, did you know you could turn them into an emulation machine? And I mean, like, as in, run every Amstrad game, Mega Drive game, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, GameCube, you know, you name it. Anything basically PlayStation 2 and before runs extremely smooth, and you can do PlayStation 2. So technically, you can get more exclusive titles on an Xbox, uh, like as in PlayStation exclusives on an Xbox, than you can on a PlayStation 5. I actually read that somewhere, and I can't remember where, but it, it did make me laugh. So, grab yourself an Xbox S or X. I really hope I took that out of the box. And let's get into it. So first of all, you're not breaking your warranty, voiding your warranty, anything like that. You're not jailbreaking it. You're not adding custom firmware or homebrew or anything like that. It's perfectly fine, completely safe, legal, even condoned to a certain extent by Microsoft herself. All you need to do is outlay about 14 pound it cost me, so probably $20, something like that, because you have to basically by registration with Microsoft to be an app developer. But don't worry, you're not gonna be developing any apps. Let me just talk you through that first, exactly what you've got to do, because you, you need to go onto your Xbox and you need to download the Dev Toolkit. So on your Xbox, find your way to the store and then search for the Xbox Dev Mode and get it installed. Shouldn't take too long to download, it's fairly short. Once you've got this, just launch it. Hit next a few times just to go through some of these steps. You've not got to worry about them at the moment, but this is the important bit. We need this code. Now you head over to the website shown. Now go do this on your desktop, so aka.ms slash activate Xbox. Once you're here, find your way to the Windows and Xbox section and press get started. Now this is where you register your account info. Enter a load of personal details, obviously, so your, your name, address, you know, everything to basically create your app developer account and then it's at this point where you have to pay like i said in the uk 14 pound probably around 20 dollars once you've done this go to xbox one development consoles which you can see there on screen and it will say manage xbox devices now here's where you want to press the plus icon this is where you're going to add your xbox and this is when we go back to the code that we had previously on our xbox you'll now enter this in and that will register that console once you've done this you can now switch and restart on your xbox your xbox will automatically know that you've put the code in so you can switch and restart don't panic this screen can take quite a while going into the development mode seems to take longer to boot up than it does just for regular mode so sit and stare at that xbox logo for a few minutes it's not an issue once it's booted up make sure you reconnect to a wi-fi connection if yours has lost its connection like mine did this is super important it needs to be connected to the internet hit continue and now go back to your main dashboard and this is what the development dashboard looks like down in the bottom right where you can see remote access you're going to need to use that address on your PC to access the back end of your Xbox. There's a couple of links to files in the description below. You need to download both of those. And then when you're on your PC and connected to your Xbox, you'll go to add, and then it'll ask you what files you want to upload. You'll simply drag the two files in, and this will do the installation process for RetroArch. Now, once you've got RetroArch installed and you're back on your Xbox, you can simply go down to RetroArch and launch it. And this will run now, similar to how it would on a PC. A couple of important things that you're gonna to wanna to do first is just the online updater. So I would recommend that you update core info files, update assets, update controller profiles, update databases, overlays, basically you can update everything. You know, it's not going to do any harm. It's better than not having them updated. You're going to need to get ROMs. Obviously, you're going to need ROMs. The emulators are on RetroArch, so you haven't got to worry about that. Depending on, as long as you want bulk standard emulators, so things to run like Mega Drive games, Nintendo games, things like that, nothing too fancy, then it's all going to work absolutely fine. But you need to go and get the ROMs. Now, I'm not going to promote any websites where you get ROMs, because obviously, you're, technically, you should own the games. You should own the games, and then you use ROMs as a backup. All right, so you should own these titles already. But you go anywhere you want to obtain these ROMs and then you simply put them on a USB stick or on an external hard drive or something like that. Plug them into your Xbox and I'll show you how you load them. And of course, the ones I'm going to show you how to load, I already own. So like you can see, I just plugged in my storage device. So now if we go to import content, we can scan a directory and the directory we want to scan is E because in this case, this is my little USB drive that I've plugged in. So let's look at Mega Drive. So we'll scan, it's actually the Sega Mega Drive Genesis, the other's an empty folder. So we're going to scan this directory and it's going to prepare for content scan as you can see at the bottom. This will take a few minutes depending on how many uh, how many ROMs you've got, but you can see it's finding all of mine now. Uh, there's over, well, there's a lot, there's over 1200. So it's just going to scan through these. So I'll just let it finish this for a second and then I'll show you what you want to do next. 
While I just leave that going at super fast speed, please do make sure you like the video because it helps me a lot. Obviously, make sure you subscribe to the channel for future content because there's going to be lots more things like this, things around technology reviews like microphones, headsets, cameras, streaming tips, streaming advice, and general gaming cool things like this. So as I say, make sure you smash that subscribe button. So I'm going to leave that scan and show you what you want to do next. So if you go to load content, so on the main menu at the top, we'll go to load content and we are going to look in E. These are these are the ones that you know I've already done. But if we just go to Sega Mega Drive Genesis, I'm hoping this will all load still with it scanning in the background because I must admit I was getting a bit impatient. But if we then just go down to if you wanted to play, it could do with being Sonic, couldn't it really? But let's say we wanted to look at Batman Revenge of the Joker. So we'll go to Batman Revenge of the Joker. We'll go to load archive and then we want to look for the archive to load it on which in this case for sega we'll just go down to sega and we've got sega mega drive genesis blast them so if we use that we should get the game launch with absolutely no issues and it's still scanning in the background which is very nice and that's it we've got our first mega drive game loaded and look at the beautiful graphics look at what you could who needs triple a xbox one titles on your brand new xbox s or x when you could be playing a Mega Drive game from the 90s and level one of one just playing a little bit of Batman just living living that dream and I mean it's absolutely beautiful it's beautiful you know it's if that's what you if that's what you want from life <laughs> and that's it that's the basics we've gone from start to finish of turning your Xbox S or X into a, 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 an emulation machine basically and we've done that very very quickly so you know you can play about getting any roms you want i mean i'm a particular fan of the nintendo 64 roms or even the gamecube roms because i like playing a bit of time splitters 2 all the super mario part is there probably a good one because you can have as many xbox controllers as you want connected obviously certainly enough to be able to have a full game of Mario Party. So it's it's amazing, honestly, absolutely amazing. And as I say, the GameCube ones around that generation of console are the ones I personally would stick to, but if you want a blast from the past to go back and play some Amstrad, some Commodore, just simply go get the ROMs, put them on a, on a hard drive or on a thumb drive, plug it into your Xbox and follow the steps that I've shown you. Until next time, peace out.